So let's take a look at the current setup. The current setup, we're in a slingshot, or it's called an FZR, full zone retracement. Hey, Thomas, good morning. So uh, tomorrow morning, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll go over um, we'll go over, like I said, from 8:15 to 8:45, uh, the strategies you're going to get on the member download page. And so uh, just heads up on that. We'll, we will record that tomorrow for a half hour. Uh, so today I want to recap the four setups that uh, that we like to uh, look for in the trade room. And then you're going to have availability to use those as strategies also. So let's look at yesterday's action first. Uh, let's first of all go over the, uh, the four setups we like to look for. And then we'll look for them uh, all morning this morning and all day in the trading day today. So this is the S&P 500. So we have three trend trade setups, and we have one counter trend trade setups. So the trend trade, the trend setups, are these are called motive waves. And what those are, those are with the overall zone trend. So we're actually going to call this zone trend setups. We have green zones and red zones. Uh, these zones were tested, uh, back tested for over 30 years. So we know our zones are accurate, and we know that they like to reverse price, and we know they like to put us in the correct trend of the overall market we're trading. Now, this is not specifically made just for the S&P 500. Uh, you can use this for any futures. Uh, it actually works on stocks, forex, currency, and actually crypto markets also, if you want to look at crypto. So what we like to do is if we have a green zone, then we are in a potential move up. And we have a red zone, we're in a potential move down. So those are zone, this would be a motive wave up, right? Or a what I call a trend up, the trend is up. So these are the trend setups we like to look for. Uh, the number one setup that we look for that's the easiest setup for traders to find is the first wave. And the first wave is simply when you go from red to green or green to red on the zones. So we're looking for a first wave setup and that is called a trend change. And what a trend change is is if you've been red zones here, you go to green zones here. So if you are changing trends in the market, the hardest part that traders have difficult time recognizing is the overall trend. They'll use moving averages or they'll use the MAC or some lagging indicator to find trend. Well, that's great and dandy, but it doesn't give you the whole trend scope, and you tend to counter trend trade the market using these lightning indicators. With this zone, these zones are very important. It's a key to our four setups. These zones and the signal line down here to give us confirmation of strength or weakness will let us know what position we're in as if we need to be net buyers or net sellers. So when you go from red to green, that's called a first wave setup you'll see price come through the red and you'll start printing green zones. We have two zones. We have a shallow zone, which is categorized as this area. That's when you have a hard move up or down to the downside. The market's really trending hard. And then you have what's called a deeper zone, which is called a full zone retracement in FZR, or we call it a slingshot. That's what's going on in the S&P right now, which I'll show you. So the first wave, the first wave you like to see the market come trend change from red to green and then get red bar or red Rinko bar uh, a printing to show you when the first wave is coming down. This one actually printed an arrow um, above the shallow zone which showing very strong momentum in the market. So that was the first trade that we looked for. That is a red to green, first retracement, first green reversal Rinko, and you're good to go. Now, the, the way you can treat this is, is use the signal line below. The signal line below will tell us 
if there's confirmation, if you get uh, into strength. Now, I have a couple of zones that are very important below on my signal lines. And these are proprietary setups that I came up with myself over 30 years of testing. And there is what's called a bear zone and what's called a bull zone. The bull zone is between, uh, if you look at the bull zone, it's between 40 and 20. And the bear zone is between 65 and 80. What that means is this. I have two signal lines below. And the signal line, I have a thin signal line, thin magenta here, overlapped by a thick magenta. The thin magenta is used on our first wave, can be used on our slingshots also. If we get down to the 20 area, or even below the 20, and shoot back up through this bare zone, once it starts shooting back through the bare zone, that gives you confirmation that first wave has momentum and should start its trend up. Okay, so that's called a full, uh, that's called a first wave zone retracement. Not only you would look for a red to green, you like that oscillator to get get down to 20 or below 20 and get up through that bear zone. So this was the confirmation popping through minimum 65 up through the 80 that this has momentum to move to the upside. Now, you see these uh, automated arrows will print. Those are retracements for the continuation. So that's the first trade setup. can only happen after going red to green, green to red, first wave. The second setup we have in the room is called a MOMO setup, or what's called a momentum setup. And what a MOMO is, that is when the market is really in a strong position where you have strong momentum to the upside or downside, and you're getting very shallow retracements. Now, for this uh, setup to, to work or happen is you have to have one characteristic. You have to have you have to be above shallow zone. You can't be into the into my red or green zones at all. So what you need is you need to be above the shallow on retracements. And what that means is, is that if you notice every time we got a retracement here, red Rinko reversal, red Rinko reversal, they all stopped above this shallow zone before they got a green bar reversal. Now that categorizes, uh, that tells you there's momentum in the market. So you can see this shallow zone on all these retracements, we had Momo, 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 Momo. We, just kept, we kept getting Momo after Momo yesterday when the market started moving from what, uh, 44.15 on the S&P, and it got cranked all the way to 44.55. There's a 40-point move on the S&P that our system was saying, don't take any shorts only by setups yesterday from 9.30 in the morning all the way to 2.30 in the afternoon. So it told you not to counter trend trade the market. We started out for a first wave here. This is the first wave that started it at uh, right after the New York Open. First wave setup, very simple to understand. And then we went right into the motive wave, I mean Momo waves here. Now the Momo waves you can do the same, you want to look at the signal lines also in the bull and, bull and bear zones. Why? Because you want to see if this has strength above the shallow retracement. So two things I like to see on Momos. I like to use both signal lines on Momo trades now. What does that mean? I want to have the larger signal line, which is a, it, it coded as a little bit larger line, not the thin one. The thin one you use on the first wave getting through this bear zone for a buy confirmation, where a Momo on the retracement, you want to stay above shallow retracement, but then you want to stay above the 40 bull zone on any, when you first, when you get pulled in into a green bar reversal. So you can see that these were Momo trades because my thin signal line on the retracement was staying above 40. Every single one was above 40, above 40 line, above 40 line when we got the green bar reversal. So we get the red bar reversals coming in. You get the green bar that printed with the arrow. Just check down to make sure our oscillators are showing strength. Our small signal line is showing strength because it's staying above my 40 bull zone. Where 
The second thing is, is I want my larger signal line, if I'm buying, to stay minimum above 65. So I want my large signal line to stay above 65, stay above 65, stay above 65, stay above 65. Now I got double confirmation on my momentum setup yesterday that all these trades, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades in a row worked based upon my zone was green. I'm above the shallow on the momentum setup. My large oscillator was above minimum 65 for buys. And my large, small oscillator was above on the momentum setup above my 40. So that let us use two signal lines with confirmation above my shallow zones on Momo trades. Remember, Momo's has to stay one above the green shallow zone or below the green shallow zone. And secondly, my large signal line for buys has to stay above 65 or below 40. And my small signal line has to stay above bull zone of 40 when the reversal happens or below 65 for sales. Very simple. The third setup we have which is, this is another trend setup. This is called a sling, uh, FZR, full zone retracement. So this is a full zone retracement, or we nicknamed it for, make it easy for traders. That's an FZR, or we nickname it the slingshot. What a slingshot does is a slingshot, and that's what we're in right now, is another trend setup is where you get a full retracement into the zone. Now you're getting into this deeper zone or even the shallow zone. You can be at either zone, but now you can come anywhere inside the zone. So anywhere inside the zone, we're looking for a reversal. So a slingshot has to have one characteristic with a signal line like you can use it like the first wave. Now what we want to do is we want to look for a, the, the market's getting into a full zone retracement. We're into our key zones. And now we want to look for the signal line, the small signal line, the, the smallest one we have, the thin signal line, to get below, for buys, we want to get below 80 threshold, the bull zone, the bottom of the bull zone, and get up through the top of the bear zone. So that's what we have right now. We had this morning, we had a bear zone. We're in a bear move. You want the small signal line to get above 80 and get back down the, above the, the bear zone and get back down through the bull zone here for the sell. So now the S&P has been rolling down since 744 this morning. The short was right around 4470 when we start breaking through this bear zone. So the slingshot has to, one, get at or into this zone. It's called a full zone retracement. So once you're at or into this full zone, you're looking for the small signal line to get above 80 to stretch the market and then get back below my bull zone because what we don't want to tap in on Momo trades, remember, is this. We don't want this small signal line coming down to my bull zone 40 like, like a Momo trade getting strength and reversing because if that happens, you're going to get what's called a failure trade is my next setup, which I'll show you in a second. So these setups are designed to work uh, together with the rhythm of the market all day long. So these setups will pop one after another throughout the trading day. So this is the trade we have now in the S&P. It got into the bear zone. And then once it got into my zone, that's not good enough. We want confirmation of the signal line to push us down through minimum 40. Some traders like to go down through 20. And that trade is working out well. Right now we're at 63 and a half potential. You're almost up six and a half points since 745 and it's still rolling to the downside because we're bearish right now. Before we move on to the next one, we're in a bear push now in the S&P. These small lines right here, these thin lines are what's called order blocks. Now these order blocks give you confirmation of reversals. If I love to see these order blocks come in on full zone retracements. This actually gave us confluence that the market's going to reverse, potentially reverse at that level with a slingshot because the order blocks are supply demand. Basically, it's where the market has moved away from price tremendously and they'd like to retest that price area. 
so these acts at confirmation in the FZR trades, which it did this morning, they're great for targets and they're great for confirmation of entries. So that's an order block, FZR, slingshot. We're moving down to the downside. So that is the fourth, our third, that's our third trade, trend trade setup that we have in the trade room. And that is a full zone slingshot retracement. Full zone slingshot retracement. All right, so the, those are the only three trend trades we have in the room you need to understand. That's it. They're all with zone trend. They have to be with zone trend. You have to be with either, if it's green zone, you're a net buyer. If it's red zone, like this morning on our last trade here that's rolling down nicely, you got to be a net seller. Now, there's one more setup. What if the market... Okay, what if the market, so this is a slingshot here. So he, here's our slingshot buy. In the, so look at some, after, that, that was the morning trades, right? First wave is red to green. Momentum setup is you're looking at above shallow retracement with the oscillator going down through the bull zone, up through the bear zone. Minimum 65. Some traders wait until it gets above 80, down through 20, up through 80. And then full zone retracement FZR. So the afternoon trade yesterday, we had some FZRs. So the FZR is very simple as this. Now we get into the full zone. This is a slingshot. Now we're into the full zone. We're right on my order block, which is beautiful. I love when the order block's in the full zone. It happened this morning on this last trade we're in now. I love it because this is previous where price moved away from price retested. It's like a supply demand line. So we get below on, a, on the slingshot because remember slingshot, you need a small oscillator now going down through 20 of the bear zone and up through minimum 65. So that started that whole big slingshot run there and then it followed by another slingshot. It went down through 20, back up through my bear zone of minimum 65. And that got the market cranking up in the afternoon. It moved from, what, 15 a quarter, as high as, what, 66. It moved up almost, what, 15 S&P points on my slingshot yesterday. So these are slingshot trades. So if I skinny this down, we went from going from a first wave yesterday into a Momo, 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 slingshot, slingshot. So those are all three trend setups. We don't need to learn, don't, we don't need to have any other indicators, no other oscillators. All we need is our zone with our oscillator on these key numbers to let our oscillators agree. It's, it's very simple to understand. So first wave, momentum, slingshot when you get in the zone. Well, what happens is, is that the market, and it happened this morning, will sometimes get a what? A failed slingshot. So the four trade setup, now this is a counter trend move or a corrective wave and what a corrective wave does in the market and this works for all markets a corrective wave that is a counter trend move against the overall zone eventually the zones will fail but we know when they're going to fail because of our trade setup called the corrective wave this is our fourth and final trade setup in the trade room and this is counter or corrective against the overall zone. If zone's green and we get a failed slingshot, then we're looking for an opposite move to downside, which can start major trends. I call this the Babe Ruth trade. Have you seen a lot of videos, previous three videos on it, where you see these markets when they move 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 S&P points. You've been seeing it recently with this market environment. Um, this is now called uh, the four trade setup and this is called the failure trade, or AKA the Babe Ruth. Now what this is, is that we, we're going to get a market that has come into the zone, but the slingshot fails to pull in, meaning we don't have the oscillator for sales going above 80 down through 20, or below 20 for buys up through 80. What does that mean? So the failure trade is a four trade setup. So I got three trend and one counter, and you can replay this video to understand them. So what happens 
is what if we get down to the zone here and our oscillator gets below 20, but it doesn't break up through, it doesn't break up through my threshold of down through 20 up through my bear zone, which is uh, 6580. What if, what if this oscillator doesn't? What if it comes up here and fails? What if we come up and fail and we don't get pulled into this slingshot? Because the slingshot requires this oscillator to get through that zone. If it doesn't, then the market can come and just reverse and start cranking down. The characteristic on a failure trade is very simple. We had one this morning on my larger Rico size. So let's take a look at it right here. What a failure is, is very simple. So here, this is a larger Rinko size. This is a, we use this as a trend filter. It's the 13030 Uni Rinko. You can see we had a slingshot here. We got down to the zone yesterday. Our oscillator went below 20, back up through with the minimum 6580. Had a beautiful one there, slingshot. Slingshot here, down through 20, up through our beer zone, minimum 6580. Shot there, another slingshot, down through in the zone, down through 20 up through bear zone, minimum 6580, another slingshot, one slingshot, two slingshot, three slingshots in a row yesterday. Then we got a momentum buy, a Momo buy here and a Momo buy here. The large oscillator on a momentum, remember, has to stay above 65, which it did on both these, and nice momentum. But look what happens on the next setup over here. And it's still working right now. Currently, the S&P of this larger Rinko size is working on a failure trade. So these are slingshot trades, slingshot, 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 momentum, momentum. But now look how we get into the zone here. But what happens is look at your oscillator. It gets below, our small oscillator gets below 20, but look how it stopped. And that's, this is why we did 30 year back test on this, these zones and, and these signal lines below. The combination works really, really great together because we know if by using this combination, if the market's in strength or weakness, we know that we got to get through this bear zone for a, for a slingshot to happen. And it stopped right at the bear zone. So the small signal line stopped at the bear zone. That's one indication. But what's the, the, the key, oops, the key for us, the key for us is what we need to happen is is a large signal line the large signal line it must let me get this back up here it must stay below minimum 40. so we want to stay minimum 40 below for shorts and minimum 65 for buys if it's going to fail on a fail slingshot into a failure trade and so if we notice here let me get these i accidentally deleted these real quick um, we notice here is our bull signal line. Here's our bear signal line. What we need is a large oscillator is key for failure trades. Failure trades are big potential moves. So for regular, re regular slingshots, we need to oscill small oscillators got to get below 20 up through this bear zone, minimum 65, shoot right through it. They did it here, shot right through it, shot right through it, momo, momo. Well, this one, it got down below 20, looking like a slingshot again, right? But our small oscillator stopped right at my bear zone, minimum 65. But more importantly, you're going to look for a failure trade when my large signal line gets below minimum 40. It started shooting down below 40. So as price turned green bar reversal, this is how it sets up. There's your green Rinko bar reversal. It's not a slingshot yet because we need pulled in. Our small signal line need to shoot right through this zone. It stops right on it. I need to shoot through that 6580, and I got a red bar, Rinko bar reversal. Well, when that red bar, Rinko bar reversal comes in, you know it's a failed slingshot and a failure trade because why? Because my large signal line is below 40. This trade starts large potential trends. And I did a video on this last week, three videos on this. We call it a Babe Ruth because, as we know, Babe Ruth, he's notorious for his home run hits. This is a potential home run hitter when you see this on uh, any Rinko size. And it works on the 30 Rinko, 25, 20, 
uh, works on even the 13 Renko, and I showed you guys how to do that in the trade room as members. But that is a failure trade, so your entry on the failure trade will be here at that level, and that started the whole reversal. So we went to a failure, and guess what we went right back into? Right back into a slingshot, because a slingshot, we get above 80, down through the bull zone, a minimum 40. A lot of traders wait till 20, and now we're in a failure trade there. So that is that is the only trades that we concentrate on on a daily basis would be your your bull and bear zones. I mean, uh, um, your three trend trades and then your one corrective wave. So these are your only trades that you want to look for during the trading day. You want to look for your trend trades and your one counter trade, which is a failure trade. All the failure trade is, it's very simple. A lot of you traders getting really good at this trade setup because the market can move potentially pretty big with it, right? With really good high reward to risk trades. You're getting really good at this because you're understanding now, I'm educating you guys, all a failure is, is a failed slingshot. Where I get down to my deep zones, I get into my deep zone, but my oscillator never gets above my bear threshold. Or I get into my deep zones in the red and never gets below my bull threshold. And then it reverses and you get yourself a potential large potential move. These bear or bull moves can really move the market good. So let's take a look at this failure trade right here, for example. This is a failure trade which produced a really hard move in the S&P. So I come up to my zone. I'm looking, I'm into the zone, so can't, this is going to be either a first wave trade, right, green to red, or green to red, or it can be a slingshot, or even a Momo. But the oscillator says, hey, I'm not a first wave because I never get above 80 and shoot down through my bull zone. I never shoot down minimum through 40, 20, so it's not a first wave. Secondly, it's not a slingshot because slingshot's got to hit the zone, which it did, and it has to get through, up through 80, down through my bull zone, minimum 40. You're right, a lot of traders waiting to 220, getting through the bull zone. It doesn't do that also. So what it does is you get a green bar reversal. Well, the green bar reversal, what I see on the large oscillator for failures, for buys, it got up through my minimum threshold of 65. So 65 said, we're strong now because I'm through my, I am through my bear zone. It's very bullish, and the red bar reversal happens here. My oscillator stays above my, my 40. My large oscillator is above 65, and the failure just shoots straight up. So I give a lot of examples in the PDF. I have two PDFs, a lot of examples on this failure trade. It just starts these big, possible, massive moves to the upside or downside. The potential, the high, it's called a high reward to risk trade because your stop is very relatively small compared to the potential move. I mean, this was a, a 010 all the way up to 40, a 30 S&P point move. It went from a failure trade into a first wave trade slingshot. So this is actually a slingshot and a first wave because I go red to green and I come down to the shallow zone. But look at my oscillator. I get below 20 and I shoot up through that minimum 65.80. That bear zone shoots right through it, confirmation. That's what a slingshot looks like. But, but look, a slingshot's not when you come up to the bear zone and my oscillators are strong. My major signal line's above 65, my minimum's above 40, and it just is a failure and she likes to move up. And that's what's happening right now in the market. Um, yesterday, if I look at the whole trading day, we'll sum this up. I go from first wave to momentum, to momentum, mo, 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 slingshot, oops. Slingshot, slingshot, slingshot slingshot, momentum, momentum, and then we go into a first wave, first wave, uh, this is a first wave uh, slingshot trade, which is a combo trade right there. Those are the four trade setups to understand in the trade room. All right, and that's what we look for on every single day. Now, before we shut this off, Gerald, this can happen on the small Renko sizes. So the smaller Renko sizes, the first waves, your stops are smaller. So let's look at today's action. I went from red to green. This is your first wave setup. First red bar reversal is here. You went from above 80 
down through my minimum threshold of 40, and that is caused that big slide there. That's a first wave. This is also a slingshot. This is a slingshot. You're into the zone. My oscillator gets above 80, down through the minimum threshold of 40. That's a big slingshot move. And then this morning, we try to get this is a smaller RICO size, so you're going to get more setups. Uh, we, we don't have any setup here at all because we never got pulled in on the signal line. And now we're into a first wave sell, uh, uh, a first wave short if you want that with a Momo as far as that goes. But you can look for failure trades on this also if the market's going to weaken or strengthen. Um, this is a slingshot first wave. This is a slingshot momentum slingshot buy. But you can look for failure trades too. This is a failure trade. The failure trades typically start trends, guys. So that's a failure trade off the smaller Renko. Now what that means is, is my failure trade is a failed slingshot. So my slingshot, you can see, went above 80 but never got through. It got into my bull zone but not got, never broke outside my bull zone. Stop right on it, showing strength. My larger signal line for buys has to stay above six, minimum 65. Look how beautiful this is and how, how we tested these for 30 years, how well they work. It stopped right at 65 for being bull. And it stopped, did not pull us in for a slingshot. So all this failure trade was a failed slingshot off a of small Rinko. So you can do this on the small Rinkos also, 113.13 at my key zones, right? Because this would be a, a first wave uh, slingshot trade, right? Green to red. But it didn't happen because the small signal line didn't get below my bull threshold. And it stopped right at 20. And my larger signal line stopped at 65. There's your reversal on the small Rinko size. 60 all the way up to uh, 86. So that was 26 S&P points, right? So that's over 100 ticks on the S&P potential. And then just upon the failure getting started. So a failure started it. Then it went into a first wave slingshot, slingshot, momentum, slingshot. So you can see that you don't need to, uh, you need to understand three trend trades and you need to understand one corrective wave.